Hi, hello, and welcome to Art Biz TV. In this interview, I'm talking with Karen Frankel, a West Australian mixed media artist and educator. Now, she specializes in teaching non-drawers simple observation skills while introducing them to her magic drawing process. Her experience comes from people of her experience with people of all walks of life has kept her passionate about bringing creativity to those who think they haven't got a creative bone in their body. Now in 2003, Karen started teaching small private drawing classes that grew into a full art school, Galleria Art Studio, running 17 classes a week for adults and children. She talks all about this in the interview, how it happened and how she ended up going to this next phase, which in 2020, her long held dream of becoming a published author and this fabulous get drawing book, even if you think you can't, was born into the world. So in this interview, of course, we're talking about how to get your book published. So let's go ahead and dive straight in. We're live. We're going live into our business for artists Facebook group. And today I am super, super, super excited to be doing this very first live interview actually with Karen. And we hope that um, it's all gonna work. We hope that the stream is gonna hit the group and you can all see it. So while we're waiting for people to come on board, we're just gonna have a bit of a, we're just drinking our tea, aren't we, Karen? Cheers, everyone. Cheers, what have you got, tea, coffee? Coffee. Coffee, perfect. Nice big one. Perfect. Okay. So, um, ah, okay. So it's the first people I can see that somebody, somebody can see us. Can you very kindly let us know in the chat that you can see and hear us? Okay. Are we appearing on your um, screen? I can see, I think, is it? Oh, there we are. Look, I can just see us. Yes. Brilliant. Okay. But we're all good. And it's I can working. see a cheers from a Facebook user. That's no from name. Goatee, so I can see, uh, yeah, that's great. That's great. Lovely. Thank you. Okay. Well, I guess we will, well, we've got one minute, so we'll have a chilly chatty, and then we will begin on the hour, because I like to be punctual. So somebody yeah, else says, is. can hear and see. Brilliant. Unfortunately, with the software we've got there, we actually can't see who it is. It's just I can look if I look on my phone. So, um if you're going to ask us a question, we might just ask you to just pop your name because the software we're using doesn't tell us the name of the person. So it would require Sophie to keep refreshing her phone, which is not a great idea. Which is not ideal in an it's interview. It's not ideal. It's not ideal. All right. Okay. I think it's four o'clock. I know that both Karen and I have been super, super, super excited. Um, it's Jyoti. Yes. Hi, lovely. I can see. Oh, awesome. Welcome. We've been so excited to do this interview. And well, first off, thank you, Karen, for agreeing and for being here. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. It's a favorite subject of mine. So <laughs> I have no problem talking about my art and my book. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Cares. Hi, Cares. Hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. We're going to officially start as people come on. That's wonderful. And if you're watching the replay, of course, you know what you got to do. I always love for you to just hit the comments below, hashtag replay, and let us know that you are watching the replay. Wonderful, okay, so our topic for today, of course, is how to get your book published. So I guess for some of you watching, perhaps this is something that you might be interested in, it's something that you've maybe got half a book written, or you're thinking, oh, if only I could put that book together, I'd love to do it, and when I first met Karen, was kind of what you were saying. <laughs> I've got this yeah, book. Yeah, indeed, indeed. I've got this book about three years ago. Yeah. Oh my goodness me. So it's been quite a project. It's been quite a journey. So let's just, we just, this is quite informal. We're going to dive straight into view. So if everyone's ready, we're just going to go straight in there. So Karen, just tell us a little bit about your background um, before I met you, and before we knew about the book project, kind of what brought you here today? Well, as you can hear from my accent, I'm originally Zimbabwean, South African, I answered both. Um, came to Australia in 84, so quite a while ago. Always been creative. My father was an artist, so grew up in that, um, that household. I did not study art beyond school. I did a, a BA, which was commonly known as a bugger all. Um, <laughs> Love it. <laughs> um, so my art was always my hobby. It was never, uh, I, it wasn't something I studied. Yeah. 
However, I needed it more when I came, when I migrated and I started doing courses and, uh, you know, various classes, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I have, I guess, always wanted to share my knowledge, particularly about drawing, because there's this crazy idea that, no, you have to be born a drawer and all of that sort of thing. Even before I knew I wanted to share it, I wanted to share it. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, so you've always been an artist, really. I've always been an artist. I um, Have I always been a teacher? I did a teaching degree, but I never taught in a school yeah. officially. Um, but I think I've always been an instinctive teacher. Um, and one of the things that really started the ball rolling for me to be an artist um, because prior to that, I was a computer programmer in a in a in another life in a business with my husband. Uh, in 2000, I had a mental breakdown, and part of my coming out of that was getting back in touch with my art in a very very big way, and that was uh, yeah the catalyst to starting up my art again. Wow, that's quite a that's quite a that's quite a change, isn't it? That's yeah. <laughs> But I guess it's those skills then that have you used those skills? Because I, I know that you've also built an art business, a literal yes. physical business. Did you yes. use it? Tell us a little bit about those, um, about that business and, and maybe have you integrated some of those skills in there? Um, yes. So as a result of um, looking after myself, shall we say, I volunteered to teach small groups. I volunteered at a community center yeah. and so that's what got the the, the teaching part the started yeah and i was one of the places where i volunteered was for a com adult com community education for uwa extension and i was approached by someone to say do you want to come teach for us and i went really you're gonna pay me to, <laughs> me? to do what i love <laughs> um and so that happened and then those people said uh resonated with me and my style and they said um we'd love you you know we'll come to you for private lessons if you you know do you want to do that and so i hired a hall with five people and i yeah. said okay if i get five people i'll start so it wasn't an intentional business yeah i fell into everything um <laughs> And in terms of what I learned through my own healing, that came out through the art as well and the teaching of art, because people are so self-judgmental about their abilities when it comes to art and drawing Absolutely. that they think they should know how to do it. And that should word is so terrible. So that self-esteem issue, leave your judgment at the door, all of that comes into teaching art. Basically. And it's become your brand, if you like, as well, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. A certain degree. yeah. So tell us, mm -hmm. I pick up on that five people in a, in a room. So many people say to me, oh, I'd like to teach, but I don't know, you know, I don't know if anyone's going to show up. But it's the number one worry, isn't it, for anyone who's yeah. going to do a workshop. So so you hired a hall and you got five five people in it. What happened after that? Because I happen to know that you've just sold a very successful business. Yes, so yes, take yes, us yes. just briefly from the five people to selling the business. Yeah. And let me say that I didn't hire the hall until I had the five people. I didn't do it after about first. distribution. I like that. Yeah. And in fact, nothing in the growth of my business was do build it and they will come. They came and I built it. Perfect. I love that. Um, and I, and I wasn't even aware that I was running a business, to be honest. So I did that for two and a half years. People approached me to say, do you teach kids? And I started keep teaching kids in another community center. And I got involved with, and this is a very helpful thing to do. I didn't have a Sophie back then. But what I did have, and they still exist, is the Small Business Development Corporation, which oh, yeah. is free advice on all sorts of things business perfect yeah uh, and so i used their workshops you know what about renting and i decided i did my homework and i decided to rent a studio yep and in the lease i rented it for a year by year rather than five years and five years because i thought at the at the most i'll lose 10 grand over yep. a year which is not a small amount of money no but it's the it's most 
It's better than five years worth, yes. Indeed, indeed. I like your thinking. So, um, yeah. so that happened. And everything about the business was people requesting. Do you teach watercolours? No, but I'll find a watercolour teacher. Because now <laughs> I was paying for a studio that was empty if I wasn't using it. So you uh, brought in <coughs> other teachers, didn't you? It wasn't just yourself. Yes, yes absolutely. Um, and then I needed help with admin. So I brought in, in fact, my daughter came, much like you. You know, I paid my daughter to come and do admin. Yeah. And eventually I turned around to her and said, I'm running a business, you know, because I was running my job and I was running a, a I was advised by by a mentor that I was seeing freely through the business corporation yeah. to get a um a system that looked after my students uh, and the admin of my students. So it was a bit of a shock to my system that I was running a, a business. I wonder how many thing, other people find that, you know, you just start organically, somebody yes. asks you, you do it, and then suddenly it's like, oh, actually, this is a yeah. business. Yeah, I didn't I set out to run a business. It was very organic. Yeah. And I ended up with 17 classes a week. Um three different kids age group classes yeah watercolors acrylic drawing so i had other um people coming in yeah. Uh, yeah 17 classes a week of which i was running three and that's the key folks anyone who wants to do this is right okay karen's not running 17 classes a week she's running three and that's it isn't it you know yeah. you built a brand like that and you and you've got you know followers and the tribe and people who who came to that business. So what happened? You got to a point where you decided you wanted to make a change? The first change was it used to be called Karen Frankel Art Studio. And may I advise anybody out there not to, well, it's a bit cheeky <laughs> to say, don't put your name on it. If you're running an art business and you're selling your art, absolutely it has to have your name on it. Yes. 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 But the fact that I was running an art school, um, meant that it didn't really need to have my name on it and I wasn't teaching all the classes. So yeah. uh, about five years ago, I had a plan, I had an exit plan basically, but yeah. five years ago or longer, I decided to change the name to Galleria Art Studio, which was an excellent move because what it allowed me to do was separate myself as an artist, Karen Frankel artist and Galleria Art Studio. Absolutely. And yeah, and, and I took a terms leave. I gave myself long service leave. <laughs> I love it. Ago. I love it. It's brilliant. And I wanted to see if the business could run without me. Yeah, because at the end of the day, that's, you know, the real business should run without you. That's yes. class technically. That's what I learned back in the day. Yeah. You know, yourself. Exactly, exactly. And I worked very hard to make it so. Yes. And, the, and my admin lady knew everything so she ran everything i got a, a replacement to, to teach my classes for a term all the yeah. other classes were being taught by the teachers anyway and it worked like a charm um which meant it was saleable yes and that's what you went on to do then yeah so how easy was it to sell an existing business did you find that process easy I found it easy because the right person came along serendipitously. Uh, the right person came along at the right time and she's worked out to be, it, it just, it was a win-win situation that was, if we told you the full story, you'd think, nah, that only happens in the movie. <laughs> it, it's that good. It's that it's good. It's fantastic. Um, although I did engage somebody to help me, yep. um, but in the end didn't need to use him. Um, because this person came along to find out about running an art school. She lived in Port Hedland and she and I said, Oh, it's a pity you don't live in Perth because I'm selling my business. And she went, Really? We went uh, back to Perth and blah, blah 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 and the whole thing happened. That's wonderful, isn't it? When it all just falls like that, it's the best possible way. I love yeah. that. Yeah. So having sold the business, what was the plan? What was you said you had an exit strategy, you exited from the business, and so where now does the book come in? <laughs> okay, so the book has always been there. I've always wanted to 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 take my teaching, which resonate, which seemed to resonate so well personally. I wanted to put that in book form, if possible. Yeah. 
Yeah. And somebody, a friend uh, suggested, based on, on her son wanting to draw, that I try and marry written words and video somehow. So okay. you weren't watching a YouTube video, but you, want, you weren't just looking at a book. And I thought that was a brilliant idea. So long before everyone became au fait with QR codes, like they are now, uh, I uh, profession, had professional videos made to yep. link with the book. So I'm not answering your question. Um, <laughs> That's all right. I've always wanted to do it. The main impetus yep. started seven years ago when my dad, just before my dad died, he said, where are you going now? He asked me exactly the same question. Yeah. And I said to him, I'm going to write a book. And he looked at me and he said, how can you write a drawing book? And I said, like, <laughs> just watch me. I wish you were here to, to see it. Yeah. 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 OK. Amazing. So how easy was it to write a book, Karen? <laughs> <laughs> Not as easy as you would think, Soph. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, although most people don't think it's easy, I, I know. And and on the other hand, easier than one would think, because I, okay. I I'm so naturally a talker. Yeah, I found that if I wrote, you just have to blur it all out. Yeah, that's the yeah. first thing. Yeah, I did have some strategies, but I, in terms of how to set it up, because I taught it for so long that I knew, you know, how I take beginners through, and that was what the book was going to be. I wanted myself in a book, my classes in a yeah. book. In a book. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, I I work better when I'm talking, when I'm demonstrating. And so the way I wrote it was this, which has its own <laughs> idiosyncrasies. The other thing that I was aware of was that I needed pertinent sketches and diagrams, pertinent photographs, and I'd chosen to go the video route as well. Um, and I wasn't, you know, now being au fait with all of the stuff, maybe I would have done it myself, but I wasn't then. Um, okay, so you so you so, wrote, wrote the writing, but you outsourced the other bits? Yes. Yeah. And if you were doing, no, I, mean, I, I want to ask actually. you that question later, so I'll hold that question off. But okay, so, so okay. what was your process? Um, so the only outsource was the video uh, and the design. Yeah. The final okay. design. And how long did it take from kind of, okay, I'm, I've got the concept, I'm going, to, I'm going to write this book, to I'm holding it in my hands? Seven years. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so because I was running a business, yeah, I didn't actually dedicate myself to, okay, every Monday you're going to write your book. It was when I had breaks, when I had the motivation to do it, and the best motivation of all was going away. I had to remove myself Absolutely. from my home. Yeah. Um, even from my dog, maybe, or, you yeah. know, yeah. Uh, sometimes she came with me depending on where I went, but I had to. And then I dedicated the whole time from waking up in the morning to going to bed at night was book. Uh, and that, that got me through. Um, well, because I'm a big procrastinator and I'm a big, um, I, I might sound bolshy and confident, but there's a little person in me going, oh, why am I writing a book and it's not going to be good enough and everyone's got one and why am I just trying, you know, so that self-doubt obviously creeps in. So okay, which, that, that's a yeah. really good point because I think a lot of people would be hampered. They'd be like, there's a lot of drawing books out there or a lot of painting books or, you know, whatever book you're going to put together. Yeah. How did you... How did you, you know, think yourself out of that process? How did you get out of that process? Or didn't you? Uh, I did get out of that process, uh, but I had to continually convince myself. When I had those thoughts, I had the arguments ready, which were, no, Karen, your book is different because you've got the video. The other reason why it was different is because of my teaching experience meant I had, I'd met everyone before. I knew what mistakes they were going to make. In most drawing books, you have no clue why your work is going to be different to uh, why it looks, doesn't look like what your exercise is telling you, but you haven't got an answer. And I, hopefully, um, in sections called watch points, gave them 
the answers to, did you do this? Did you do this? Did you? So I knew that that was also something different. So I had a unique selling point, shall we say. And that's, you know what, that's the most important thing, isn't it? Um, did you do any research before or did you just go, look, I've taught this, this, this is my thing, this is what I'm going to do. Did you look at what other people had written or did you decide yeah, not to do Absolutely. It? Yeah. No, yeah. I did. And, and sometimes I found a book and I thought to myself, why am I bothering? It's all there. It's beautifully <laughs> written. You know, so sometimes I did that. But I have to say, in uh, which I feel quite chuffed about, is that most of them, the majority, were not aimed at, they were aimed at beginners, but they were not written for beginners. So they yeah. were assuming a certain level of knowledge. They were assuming a certain understanding of jargon. And I don't teach like that and I don't write like that. Um, yeah. And I think that was quite refreshing. If you look at the standard, which is um, drawing on the right side of the brain, which kind of has become the standard. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to diss her because I wish that I, you know, had that <laughs> success. But it is so boring and belaboring going through her screeds. And I didn't want it to be that. Yeah, you wanted it a bit more hands-on, a bit more inspiring, a bit more real and a bit more down to earth. And we should say, I'm just, I know you've got your copy there. And I i thought I had my, I was like ready to, yeah, there it is, look, see, I've got my copy right here. So, well, we'll talk about where other people get a, a copy at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, okay, so if you were to do it again, <laughs> Would you take seven years? Or what would you do differently? What would you say to someone who wants to write their book now? Their, their okay, book, so book together? if you were involved in other stuff, I think mainly the seven years has became seven years because I was doing other things and I chose not to put my priority into the book. Yeah. Uh, so I knew that once I sold the business and I had – I wasn't thinking about the business 24-7, I would have much more time. And so I probably yeah. did more work in the last three years than in the previous uh, four I mucked about. Um, so, yes, I might take seven years. I don't think that was a, a definitive thing of, of success or not success. Um, what really did it for me was the COVID lockdown last year. Interesting, isn't it? Is that an enforced time? Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. when I that's when I completed it. The things I would do differently, which I'm happy to talk about now uh, yeah. or later, depending on what you what you. No, let's do it now. Let's do it. Okay. So what I would change is, I I went through a massive learning curve, and therefore I would change some things based on that learning curve. The most important one, I reckon, is the editing of the book. So in terms of um, I paid an editor, somebody that I'd met many years ago, and I thought I would give her the book, she would send it back to me, it would be all edited, and I'd send it off to my, my designer, and boom, bang, the book would be done. Yeah. And that was a very naive thought. So... <sighs> That you don't have to send it to a professional editor. Kids might might um, um, you do have to send it to a professional editor, but not first. You need to get other people, as many people's eyes on it yeah, as absolutely. possible. Yeah, people in your field, people not in your field. Um, I had fantastic people. One of my ex students went through it. She was an English teacher. My best friend was an English teacher. She went through it. Checking grammar, checking, you know, I'm I'm a writer in that you don't have to I don't have to check my grammar when I'm talking. That's know, right. I just go blah, 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 <laughs> easily. And if I did that for the book, I needed to check into it, even though it was in my voice. So I was very careful not to take me out of it. I didn't want to correct it to that degree. No, 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 no. That no, was no. the major, major, major learning curve. I okay, so we get designer way too lots early. of other people to look at it before it goes to a professional editor. Okay. And how did you... In my opinion. So, okay, so how did you get 
the how did you put it all together so we've got the writing which i guess you know you literally let's, let's be practical here so you got the writing what on word docs this is the stuff people want to know yeah yeah, you yeah, wrote yeah, on yeah, a yeah. Word doc. yes you had it all okay no? so here, here's my my menu i printed this up at um at uh, office works and i bound it and everything so that was my very first book right yeah um yes in word i did try a uh, an app called Scrivener, okay, which seemed fantastic, but in the end, I was playing with the the bells and whistles rather than just writing the bloody thing. Yeah. I knew that I was going to get a designer to actually do the the physical layout of the yeah. pages, etc. Um, so I had to give him uh, placeholders for where the photographs were. Yeah. Be yeah. and whether uh, so you do have to pay a lot of attention if you're writing this sort of book to um, labeling your um, uh, every image you've got to have labeled what it is where it's going to go otherwise absolutely. you're going to wrong, wrong diagram especially if you're way. not if if you're not designing it if you yeah. are designing it in something like publisher and you're of that nature and i am of that nature but eventually i said to myself karen you cannot do everything no, great i love it it's so important to learn to go fun. what are your key skills your key skills you've got the knowledge you're the teacher you put the information in you do not want to be not wasting your time but you've got better things to do with your time than to do yeah. that i love that so that went to somebody else and then i'm what very lucky in that I, I could afford to pay him i chose to pay for exquisitely designed professional i wanted a professional result yeah i yeah you know. so, so okay. i didn't want to go um uh, what's it called print on demand which was yeah. my other option yeah yeah all right so you've got you get the first draft you you look at it all and you're like okay we make some tweaks and changes how does it go from the designer to to being here and being able to buy it like what was that process like mm, um my designer has a relationship um sorry i was just reading a, a message um my design yeah, no, no, no. with book printers yeah so he got me a whole lot of quotes i looked at quotes i belonged to some publishing facebook things i was looking at lots of different options i was looking at um ingram spark and i was looking at there's lots and lots of print on demand things um even for amazon it was massively difficult for me to get a, a print on demand for Amazon as well because of the images. Yeah, it is was not say, suitable for it's a completely different ball game, isn't it? To just yeah. writing a book and getting it on there. But actually, Absolutely. This is a Absolutely. That's why I was so interested to, to hear the process because it, wouldn't it be great to put something like this? But how do you? So he Indeed. found some suggestions, and you did the you did the hard labour and had a look at them all. Uh, yes, pretty much. Um, and 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 another thing that I wanted, because I wanted it to be what I wanted, and again, I could afford to pay for it, so I, get, I take less profit because yeah. of that. I wanted it ring bound. Right, so it's a real but work. I wanted a cover. Yeah. So when you take this to libraries, to bookshops, and I've taken it to bookshops, they all look at this and they go, hmm. Nice. Now I can put that on my bookshelf. Whereas if it's a pure ring bound book, that they cannot put on their bookshelf. Interesting. So that cost me more money, I have yeah. to say. I chose yeah. to do that. But because that means now you can I get want it just ring bound to go flat. Oh, absolutely. Because you're taking a lesson, and the last thing you want is some book that doesn't sit flat. Correct. I love but the... I've got a, a spine. Brilliant. Your attention to detail there is just, it's really, really good. And I, you know, I'm hearing that you've outsourced a lot and I'm not going to ask you what it costs, but you've you know, a substantial oh. investment into this. So it gets my to the- My daughter came with my hobby. Because <laughs> I'm just money at That's it. That's right, absolutely. Well, so hopefully at some point they'll come back to you. So how did you make the, the final decision with the company that you went with? Like what was your criteria for that? Um, cost, 
they were all around the same cost for this level of quality. Yeah. It was made easier because not a lot of people offer this binding. Yeah. So it was made easier. Now and, now. and quite frankly, my designer is a is a is a professional designer who who, you know, designs the Dockers logos and you know, he's right. he's up there. And yeah. I and I took his advice. Yeah. Yeah. I was happy to take his advice. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. And it turned out just stunning because he's a stickler for detail. And if they would have screwed it up, they would have had both of us to deal with because yeah. I had gone through so much trouble that I wasn't going to lose it at the last minute. And, and I've heard horror stories of people getting their books from the printer and going yeah. through and it's been crooked and it's been this and it's been that. And I didn't want to go there. So experience was worth every cent. So we're saying, yeah, okay. So we're saying if you if you want to put basically if you want to put an art book together, a book with pictures, with anything, you know, whatever you're teaching, doing, you want to put your own book together somehow. A, you did a lot of outsourcing, which I really love, and B, yes. you've really gone and got, you know, top quality. You've taken people who know what they're doing, you've taken their advice and gone, I'm, you know, that's it. I'm going with somebody who recommends that. And you've we're ended up with this beautiful quality product. And yes, I think, you. you know, I think, the, yeah, so like I said, your attention to detail has paid off in abundance. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a stunning workbook. Thank so, you. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> what are your future plans for this lovely book? Um, it is available as a, as a PDF um, online as well as the physical book. My yeah. plans ultimately are to turn it into a course, into a That's what I thought you were going to say. Yeah, course. Yeah. And so my thinking is, Karen, it's all you've got the videos, you've got the images, you've got the right, you've got it. What what is there to do? Um, however, there is quite a bit to do. Don't isn't there, so just a just a yeah. little bit in yeah, there. Yeah, just a little bit. So now that I've been working with Kajabi for a year now, because I I I signed up for Kajabi specifically to launch this book. And um, for anyone I would love this it to be a course. Has no idea what that is that is an all-in-one right. online software where you can have your website and but primarily we're using it for launching courses and memberships and that sort of thing so yeah um and and yeah, other courses as well but specifically the book and also it's about introducing people and i and i can see from the person that's put that lovely message up um i've got a a, a get drawing facebook group which yes. is the community. And that's one of the things I really wanted out of this was both before this for people to buy the book, obviously, but a continuing community of beginner drawers learning with me. And that's something that we didn't talk about. And I sort of looked through here and I thought, that's interesting. If you've mentioned beginners and you mentioned the other books, we didn't specifically actually talk about the audience that you 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 know that you've actually targeted this to us. It's completely and utterly for beginners, for those people who think I can't do it, I can't draw, I'll never be able yeah. to draw. Well, hence the title, get drawing, even if you think you can't. Even if you think you can't. And and yeah. when I thought of that, I thought, oh, don't be naff, Karen. Don't don't put a stupid subtitle in and like that's just silly. And then I thought, no, that's who you are. Go for your life. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How often do we get put off by a little voice in the head going, don't do that, don't do that. But the fact yeah, yeah, that yeah. that came out straight away, that was the right title. It's your title. It belongs to your brand, your book. I yeah. love it. I'm so pleased that you just went with that, that you didn't allow yourself to go, oh, I need to have some other title. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. It's very, very powerful. And so you've got the book group so people can, can because um, I know that you do weekly videos, you do weekly videos, they've got the book. And then they're going to be able to get the course. Yes, hopefully. So the big secret, which is no longer a secret, is that I this, in fact, next week is my last week. After 18 years of teaching in the business, I have now retired from teaching. I will still be doing some physical workshops and relief teaching and that. And uh, it's very bittersweet because I leave some of my students who've been with me for 15 years. Yeah. Um, and even the beginner students are going, oh, but we love you, which is very flattering and lovely. Yeah. Um, so now I can put more attention both into my art, but also into doing developing this into a course. I've got another course on uh, watercolor pencils that I want to develop and 
change, pivot, shall we say. Yeah, absolutely. That's what it's all about, isn't it? I mean, your journey has been so inspiring. I think not, I mean, the book, yes, but also building the physical business, you know, going through that whole sort of chopping and changing. And now, you know, I'm really excited for you to see, you know, the next phase. I think it's incredible. So many people dream of having something like this and, and you know, they, they don't make that happen. So so what, what would you say to somebody who is sitting there thinking, oh, I, I don't know, you know, I've got an idea, but just like you thought, but I think there's lots out there, I'm not sure. What would you say to someone who's sitting kind of on the fence? They're not really quite sure. Um, I would say do it, just do it, even if it's for your own um, satisfaction. But I do think, I guess, that you need to at least ask yourself why. So if it's for personal gain, fabulous. Yeah. If it's to make a big profit, don't do it. I, you know, I hope I make a big profit, but that's not the reason to do it, to be a best. Yes, no. of course, we all want to be a bestseller, but that's also, um, if you think you've got something to say, like I had to play those two heads, um, find that unique selling, you know, why is my book different to the others? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's I think very, that's, very important. It's but, really important. Um, it's there are other reasons for writing a book, even if it's not different. Uh, your voice is, has to be different just because it's yeah. you. So it's yeah. not hard to find a reason why it's different. Um, and my, it's as simple as a notebook, you know, yep. writing it physically or a word processor. And can I say something that I haven't said yet, which is a very big thank you to you, Sophie, oh. because <laughs> I met you at the right time in terms of my journey. It was just before I sold the business. And having a mentor, having someone who kicks your butt when you need it kicked is uh, is very useful and important. So I highly recommend uh, for people to, to do that for themselves. To have somebody to hold them accountable. I think, you know, there was a bit of butt kicking, I do remember, in the process. Um, <laughs> I think just, you know, whoever it is, however it is, choose to do it make sure that you're speaking your voice and that you have that unique angle, whatever it is, and, and find someone to hold you accountable because yeah. if you're sitting on turret trying to get it done, it, you know, there are easier ways, right? Reach out and, and get some help and get, get some yeah. support. Yeah. That's just been amazing, amazing, amazing. So I think we need to let people know where they can get their hands on this book. Where, where, can, we, where can we buy it, Karen? If you physically want to go into a shop to buy it, mm -hmm. give me a, uh, <laughs> I'll give you my, my address. No, I won't give you my address. Uh, you, you're welcome <laughs> to come it, and buy it from me. I won't, it's I, available I won't be, in, in stores it is here available, in way. It's available in um, Planet Books. It's available at uh, Diabolic in, in um, Oh, what's the name of the suburb? Uh, okay, but well, we're talking, we're talking about head. Perth specifically. What if we're outside of Australia? How if do we? You're out of our, if you're outside of Australia, you have to get the PDF. I'm afraid it's okay. unless you'd like to pay the enormous costs at the moment. But okay. within Australia, I actually pay for shipping. You can go to my website, which is simply karenfrankel.com, and we will put can, that put all the links, we'll put the links to your website, all your social media, all, all the stuff will be, yep. and if we're watching this, we'll put as much either above it if we're on Facebook or below yep. it on YouTube. To make but you sure can buy it directly off my website, pay by credit card, and I'll ship it to you. Yeah, it is, perfect. It and if you're thing. a long way off, you can grab the PDF version, unless yep. you're on the paper for the yep. Facebook, for the postage. So someone's just saying that she's overjoyed to be a member of Get Drawing and learn from Karen, excellent artist, dedicated teacher. Karen is an eternal inspiration. I love oh, that. Lovely. Thank you so much. And I agree. I've known Karen for a little while now and totally, totally inspiring lady, I say, both as an artist and as a teacher and now as an author. I think, you know, no matter mm -hmm. where we are in our journey, it's, a, it's an inspiring book anyway. And just Thank to know you. the person that's put that together, I think, is magical. So have you got any final thoughts, anything else that you would like to share to our aspiring writers or aspiring art book publishers? Um, don't beat yourself up. 
if you are procrastinating <laughs> it's not a train wreck i took seven years and so if it takes seven years it takes seven years but do it so that's the key isn't it that is the um, key get it you know, done it's it's the doing and there are lots of trial and errors and i've done pictures and i and i learned to edit the the photographs um or i drew uh, photographs uh, drew sketches specifically for it and i drew them three five ten times because they weren't good enough and then i scanned them and I, so it is time consuming it is relentless it is nitty gritty stuff that just needs to be done not the fun stuff you just have to get through it yeah i think you know what i'm it's and i've spoken to various authors over the years and I, that's that's what i hear is you just got to get over it and i met somebody who said i i'm Went to a foreign country, sat in a cafe for 10 days and did nothing else but write the book, you know, just got it done. And, you know, for some people that will be one way of doing it. Others will just spend, you know, I don't know, two, three hours a day over a certain period of time. Yeah, time. it depends it on just your doesn't matter, does it matter, does it matter? You just got to do it. So a couple yeah. of other people have said the book is definitely fantastic. I'm happy to have it. Somebody says buy it direct if you've seen Karen at an art show as I did. That's fine. That's ah. great. As long as you're in Perth, Australia. But... You know, if you're if you're watching this from either the US or the oh, UK, oh yes, it's available at Mandering Art Centre and Midland um, Art Centre. So it is available around the traps. Uh, it's it's already store, available if you're there. if you're in in Perth, WA. If you're in yeah. Perth, indeed. Yeah, and then you can come and meet Karen as well. So that's a double bonus. <laughs> thank you. Listen, Karen, thank you so much. It's been it's so much fun. It's been totally enlightening. And I wish you ever every success with your course and, of course, ongoing with getting this book out into more hands and Thank you. growth of the group, et cetera, et cetera. And don't forget to follow Karen on the good old socials as well. And we'll put links to all of those Indeed. above and below these videos. Has anybody got, oh, I should have asked, has anybody watching got any questions for Karen? I should have said that at the beginning, really. If you've got any questions, type them in now. Or if you're watching the replay, of course, um, post your questions below yes, I'm, sure. I'm, I'm very happy to answer questions happy to come back and, and answer them because i think it's such a, an inspiring topic um, i should have i should have asked that earlier i should have said if you've got any questions so i think if you've got any questions just post them below and um karen's happy to answer them at, at any point so yes. thank you so much for saying here and you're very welcome you thank you for asking my pleasure all right, thank you everybody for watching live as well. You're amazing. I can see we've got some Karen fans. So thank you so much. Take care and um, have a great day. Bye-bye, everyone. And get drawing. And get drawing. Bye. Hey. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Sophie. Thank you. Thank you.